welcome us to the podcast and uh, thanks for joining us and uh, we are going to discuss a lot about the machine learning uh, obviously machine learning in finance and uh, how to get started into this field so first of all i would really like to start with the small introduction of yours so can you give your introduction and so having me nitin uh, so my name is ashish darwar i am a data scientist at piramal finance and i have been working for almost 2 years now uh although uh, i have been doing uh, personal projects since 5 years uh, but i have been in the ed- industry for 2 years uh, i also run a podcast called the data science show mm-hmm. and where we invite uh, people from the industry and uh, they speak about their experience and also interact with the audience so uh, like uh, you are working as a, a data science manager in piramal finance so can you tell me like uh, what is the difference between data science in the regular industry like healthcare or other sector and in the finance like is there any primary difference or are the things uh, same within across the industry yeah, so although a lot of things are similar like any other industry uh, but i think there are like one or two points that differentiate it uh, so one of it is uh, is the regulations that uh, we have in india uh, and even all over the world so you can't just use any black box model uh, to uh, give loans right uh, because of the regulations of the rbi and uh, so the any model that you are using it has to be transparent and uh, explainable uh, and uh, the model output should not turn out to be like discriminatory towards any class of people and uh, another thing is the excess of data that we are getting right now mm. so because we we have uh, credit bureau data uh, we have the bank statements we have the third party transaction data and uh, we also have uh, like third party demographic data mm-hmm. so which can be like hyper local mm-hmm. so there is an excess of data that we have access to so uh, which might not be there in other industries yeah. as of now like you to uh, talk the like the model should be explainable so like uh, is there any scope of deep learning in that case or like people go with the classical ml like a boost decision tree regression plus tree so uh, yeah so there is scope of deep learning although uh, people try it not to use it in the industry as of now mm-hmm. due to the regulations mm-hmm. but yes uh, for unstructured data especially uh you have to use uh, deep learning right you can't use anything else so there are ways to explain so somewhat explain deep, deep learning models as well right mm. that that is being used so like you talked about the unstructured data so like uh, like it, typically people think that ki in uh, financial uh, world we have actually numbers like maybe uh, as or financial income of some person or maybe what is what is the reputations on based on that the company do some predictions or something something like that so like how the text or image data comes into picture uh, in this domain uh, video data for example uh, whenever a person applies for a loan mm-hmm. the lending company takes a video interview of mm-hmm. the person so that, that's how video data can come into the picture and uh, text data for example uh, customers uh, send some complaint or some feedback via email or via some form to the bank or to the company so that's how text data comes so company use this data to like uh, analyze it or make some other model or do some predictions for the future right yeah okay so i think in this case they had to go with the uh, deep learning models because in text or in uh, images like these kind of things are more useful is uh, knowledge of finance required to get to the financial data side uh, financial data industry or maybe in banking domain like uh, knowledge of finance is required or maybe one should move with the statistics or data science uh, knowledge so in general like the corporate roles that we have uh, in that <coughs> finance is required the, the the knowledge of finance is required mm-hmm. uh, but if you are into like uh, more research kind of roles uh there you can get away with uh, not knowing much about finance because it is more about the data science and algorithms mm. than the specific domain so if you are like deep into uh, computer vision uh in in a bank right so 
that's that's a role that you you can get away with not knowing finance uh, like people from uh, other domain who may want to switch in the data science they actually think that data science is all about code like uh, we have to code code and get the right result or maybe we'll get the right uh, predictions but like how do you use statistics or uh, like uh, mathematics to interpret the results that you get like is there any use of statistics or mathematics? so uh, i think statistics and maths are required they are the prerequisites uh, for any data science role because uh, even if you are doing some uh, basic data analysis mm-hmm. you have to know statistics mm-hmm. to generate insights out of the data and also if you are if you are in like more involved roles uh, like in specific domains for example in nlp or in computer vision or in reinforcement learning so there you have to know the maths behind all the algorithms so you have to know calculus you have to know linear algebra so i think yeah maths and statistics are required for any role uh, yeah so how like uh, are the banking means are the financial domain also use reinforcement learning like uh, have you come across any situations or in use case i personally haven't worked on reinforcement learning in, in my uh, like two years of experience uh, but yeah, i think it is possible so reinforcement learning is like uh, learning via game theory right mm. so if uh, probably you can model a customer's behavior via game theory mm. so i think th- there is a use case but i haven't worked on it yeah, yeah. i think that's the most uh, genuine use case because uh, these things are hard to model using classical ml or other things and right. uh, and i think the main use of reinforcement learning is because it is like how we actually learn as a human so like i had a chance to work with the rl on the past so that's the i think the best part of the rl because when people work with rl it actually happens that ki they get to know the things and when you will realize it happens that ki it is how we also learn as humans like uh, giving the rewards the positive reward or the negative reward something like that data science is all about continuous learning people says data science is all about continuous learning so let's say a peop- a, a, a person who is who is actually in data science domain and uh, who is actually not learning any new thing like let's say he has a sufficient knowledge of classical <coughs> ml and statistics but is not able to adapt to the new technology or new uh, methods or new algorithms so what are the problems that he or she can face uh, in the long run so if you are not really learning much continuously uh, you can face like extinction in as a data scientist right uh, because the field is evolving every single day mm-hmm. and you have to keep up with uh, the new stuff that is coming every single day uh, because like other companies will have people who will learn new things and who will innovate who will make the company better at using the data and if you don't do it uh, i don't think you can survive in this field so i think continuous learning is important so how like uh, how do you keep yourself uh, in this uh, process like how do you learn uh, can you recommend some like books podcast blogs or something that you use for the continuous learning in the data science domain yeah i think for continuous learnings uh youtube is a great resource uh even the like uh, online courses from coursera udemy uh you can even take free courses on coursera by auditing them you can watch playlists on youtube there are like tons of playlists free playlists right and uh, you you can read research papers in from the domain that you are interested in and uh, i think that that was a purpose why i i also started my own podcast where i invite other yeah. people from different domains in data so it can be data engineering it can be ml ops it can be data science in any data data related field mm. and they come and share their experience i think that is also a great way to learn as okay. a beginner like when you started your career like what are the problems do you think a fresher faces when he or she try to switch in data science so like there are two scenario one maybe he is from some uh, like coding maths background and one maybe like he is not from coding maths background so like uh, can you give, uh, give uh, like a uh, explanation about how what are the problem faces by these two types of people when they try to switch into data science industry the number one problem is that they they are not clear with the fundamentals right 
uh, so fundamentals by fundamentals i mean uh, the maths behind it mm. the uh, the algorithms the like how do you actually handle data using code mm. i think programming is the first skill that anyone should know while they are entering a data science right so you can choose any language mostly people choose python mm. uh, people choose r right uh, so choose any language know how to work with the data right how to handle it how to clean it how to process it how to make it usable for a for an actual model then then go into uh, the modeling bits then go into the deployment things right but first clear the fundamentals of data science so that is programming that is maths that is basic algorithms yeah i think i think that's the main problem yeah and uh, i think what i've seen uh, with the most of the people is that they actually try to implement advanced algorithms so directly they want to work with text image data and uh, they want to deploy the model and in the resume they said that they have made an app with the flask or something like that but when asked about the algorithm like how this algorithm works why do you follow this particular procedure so they are they are unable to explain like i think mostly people are copying the youtube projects it's okay to learn from the youtube but it's it should be about applying your own thinking like why this is being done so i think most of the people in fact of people from maths or stats program also like those because they th- think that ki the code is the only thing like this particular advanced algorithm is the only thing that is going to help them get a job but uh, when they sit for the interview and they are asked basic fundamental questions about how by this how this logistic regression works how sbm works how knn works how do you get a uh, deal with the overfitting in the knn or something like that then they realize that they have uh, like underestimated the fundamentals so i think this is yeah. the this is the most common problem and uh, like when ever i try to post on linkedin i regularly emphasize about this point but again and again i think people are making the same mistakes i think yeah, having a good and a standing out project is also important in your resume because uh, when, whenever i see a resume they have the like the, like the same projects titanic iris uh, <laughs> house price the, yeah so and even they don't understand the basics behind that also so people, i think having a, yeah, yeah good project, actually copying these projects from some youtube tutorials like most of the youtube tutorials are based on these data set only what i suggest as a better way is to you know like uh, take a data set or uh, maybe any data set and like uh, start from the fundamental of data analysis like uh, plot graphs like don't see any tutorials like think from your own way like what are the things that i can get from this data what are the plots that i make combine two three variables and try to make the plot so like when people try to think in- independently they are able to make a better project or better do better work obviously they should refer to any youtube tutorial for learning but that should not be the part of the project that are they are pasting in the resume like uh, maybe uh, if you'll see any titanic or house related uh, house price related videos on youtube i think millions of people have followed them so i think that is the project that is common in the millions of people but yeah uh, mostly people think that like uh, if regression is there then just uh, y is equal to x beta plus epsilon this is the regression but they don't go to the fundamentals like why if the variable is not significant what they should do uh, if it is not uh, following the assumptions what they should do they are not uh, aware about these things so i think it is better to focus on the fundamental and uh, take any data set like uh, any data set can be equivalent to house price predictions but uh, not necessarily that particular data set and apply their own thinking to model the project uh, and i think uh, many people also join like expensive boot camps mm, yeah. uh, and uh, most boot camps what they only teach is the only the modeling part yeah. they start yeah. with a clean data set mm. they and they they start with a clean data set then they build a model on it they evaluate the model and i think that's it uh, they don't even cover the basic theory behind it yeah in and fact in real life the data is not always clean like it will never be clean in fact uh, what i have learned from the my recent project is that most of the time goes with the handling the data itself like uh, yeah. what is a good data the data validation the data annotations i think most of the people have not done the data validation also like they don't understand what is a good data means uh, how to annotate a data what is the better uh, better notation means they i think the most boot camp is they are just trying to start they start from the regression and they will cover entire thing re- related to 
NLP, computer vision, or other domain, video analytics, everything. They will be giving, I think, more than 35, 40 projects. And uh, people think that they know everything. But when asked about the algorithm of like how the particular algorithm works, they are not able to explain. It's better to have two, three good projects, not 35 or 40 projects, but actually put honest effort in making those projects. And I think, uh, you know, like if you if you see any bootcamp, uh, any project can be done in one or two hours. Like they give you the code, like this import the data set yeah. uh, as a features variable now and then fit the model and get the result. But uh, I think uh, if it is a case of only one or two hours to make a project in wire, the industry expert uh, is spending months and months to do a single project. So this is not as simple as people think. They are they think that the, uh, the modeling is the only part, but uh, like uh, why that particular model is valid like uh, what what if the model fails like it's not able to give you the good result and one more thing is that like in the industry it, it rarely happens that we utilize the direct output like we obviously use the output to model it to solve some problem it's not like we get the prediction zero one and we give it as that this is the result of our code so i think people need to understand this and they need to think from the scratch like uh, how should they start th apply the wrong thinking to do the things and it is easy because they have they have, may have followed a lot of YouTube videos and from those thinking they need to think that if I get a fresh data then how I need to start and uh, I think modeling part is uh, not that difficult because uh, any line of code you can get in Python on the internet but uh, to understand the entire fundamental is unnecessary. So that 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 was the whole reason why as part of our podcast uh, we created an end-to-end -end project where we cover everything from gathering the data to cleaning it to processing it to, to the to the modeling part and then to deployment and then dashboarding we we cover everything and modeling is like 10 to 15 percent of the yeah, work it, it is always 10 to 15 i think most of the time goes in the beginning like gathering data till the modeling happens and also a lot of times goes in the monitoring like what if like if the continuous data is coming you have to retrain the model redeploy it and then monitor what uh, the inference or predictions are good or not then what you need to do in that case i think uh, it is the most important part to understand the fundamentals if, so uh, anyone from the non-tech background wants to get into the data science uh, particular data science not data analyst i think data science is more towards the technicality of math and statistics then how should they start like let's say uh, uh, a person have the mathematics knowledge till the class 12 and they wanted to get into the data science, then how should they start? Or is it possible for them to switch without having a data science degree or not? Like I personally feel that they can switch. Obviously they have to give a hard fight. But what are the uh, steps that they need to follow to get into the data science? I think as we discussed earlier also, first we have to get the fundamentals right. So just uh, first know the breadth of the whole data science so that you can pick one or two things that you want to specialize in, mm -hmm. right? So just try try to do a broad course on it. For example, you, you, you could find some course on Coursera mm -hmm. or, or on YouTube, so which which will just overview the whole data science for you. Uh, then uh, then you uh, see what, what, what interests you and then go deeper into that. And as you are studying it, also keep implementing it and uh, maybe maintain a GitHub repo on it uh, so that you can showcase your work publicly and keep uh, like keep talking to other people who are in the industry and uh, try to do some project on your own. And I think you learn best by doing. Yeah, so, whenever someone gives us a direct solution, we actually don't put effort to find it by ourselves. And like in the process of finding it, we actually learn a lot of things. So let's say someone give me a code to plot a box plot so maybe i will use the code directly but whenever i will try to my by my own maybe i will get some error i will try to resolve that error so in the process i will also learn like uh, if this error comes in the future what i need to do so people need to put effort to learn rather than getting the things like uh, in presented among themselves directly like if so some person has uh, followed some entire boot camp and then he is appearing before the interview and one other person who is actually try to learn by himself by finding the things online. So the second person will have better idea about the things. And if some real yeah. error comes in the uh, future, he can solve better. Like uh, the other person who is actually following the bootcamp only. So 
as we started from the financial data science so like what are the opportunities being created in the financial data science like uh, is this a good domain to pursue uh, are the future scopes good in this particular domain yeah i think india is going really big on finance and lending because uh, like the biggest companies in india are in this domain mm. so i think there are like tons of jobs uh, that are going to come up uh, and because we have more and more data uh, coming every day uh, we'll need someone to analyze it we need someone to get insights from that because the business people uh, can't do it on their own mm. so we need someone who knows data to do it right so i think it is really uh, a great field to enter uh, if you want to enter into data science and uh, also uh, we also need like engineers uh, like ml engineers or ml ops engineers who can deploy models at scale because uh, you you can't just build models on your own personal laptop and expect it to create value for the business right mm-hmm. you have to Uh, deploy it so that the business can actually use it so we need those people as well i think uh, that will be all for this postcard uh, i said and thanks for coming thanks, in thanks nathan yeah it was great talking to you and i had a great time